In this video, we're going to do a very quick review about how to control a Festo um, drive. It can be either a CMMP or a CMMO via Modbus TCP using the National Instruments LabVIEW programming environment. So what are we going to do? What are, what are we going to use to uh, do this implementation? If you go to Google and just do a search, um, for example, CMMP LabVIEW, we found a nice program uh, or sample program in these forums from National Instruments. Uh, so this user here is asking for uh, some help about how to uh, commission the uh, the Festo drive using Modbus TCP in, in the LabVIEW environment. So I'm just going to jump to page number three here and I'm going to scroll down to this point of the conversation right here. So this user, Eugene, uh, he uploaded a, a solution that he created. Um, for this solution, he's using the National Instruments Modbus library. Keep that in mind. So this one. Keep that in mind because we're gonna we're gonna have to install it here in a second. Um, so this is important. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to see some of uh, some of the elements that he's using within his program. Um, so you can just download this program. This is just a, or this file. This is just a zip file. Uh, I already did that and I have it here. Um, so when you unzip that file, this is what you're gonna have in that file. And um, I told you that you're going to need that Modbus library, right? So for that, you can just launch this BI package manager. It is under uh, JKI, BI package manager, and it's right here, BI package manager, BIPM. All right, I already have it open here. And then um, for this, you need internet connection. So after you have the internet connection, um, you can just type in Modbus on the search bar and you're gonna see the NI Modbus library right here. This is the current version as of today. Today is uh, September the 6th. This is the current version as of today, all right? So I already installed that as you can see here. I already installed that in my, on my machine and um, I'm also, uh, the, the next thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna open this this file, uh, the one that we got from the zip file, right, from the forum. So I'm going to open this file here, and then I'm going to get a window saying that there was uh, this one, that there are some warnings here because there was some migration of, um, or the dependency path changed, right? And this is just because, um, uh, this is in a new folder, right? So I'm just gonna close this. And this is the program that this user from the forum created. Uh, all of these ML elements here. So as you can see, you have some connection elements here, the IP address, the port for the Modbus TCP communication. Then you have a button here to initialize communication, close communication. This is, uh, he calls his, he called, calls this config. Um, this is more of a transfer, transfer data. Uh, I'll show you here in a second. Then you also have a button up here to read the status. You can enable this to constantly read the status coming from the drive. And then you also have the CCON and CPOS bytes here, right? If you keep scrolling down, you also have some direct um, uh, variables down here. So before I keep going here with the National Instruments environment or the LabVIEW environment, um, let me go one step back. Um, in terms of the configuration in the in the Festo configuration tool, uh, I don't, I really don't have anything special here. The only thing that I have um, here, it's it's Modbus control interface, Modbus TCP. Uh, for this example, I'm using a CMMO ST. Uh, LKP. This is the one that supports Modbus communication. What else did I change here? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I don't have anything special here. Under field bus, I just have FHPP standard, port 502, and then a timeout of 1000. Uh, I didn't change anything there, and uh, yeah, nothing here. I'm just gonna leave FCT open here so I can monitor, uh, I can use this FHPP monitor to see what's 
uh, coming from the PLC or from LabVIEW in this case and what I'm sending to LabVIEW, all right? So let's uh, actually, let's go back to LabVIEW here for just a second. Uh, one of the things here, the main the main purpose of this video, I'm not gonna go in depth into the LabVIEW programming because to start with, I'm not a, an expert in LabVIEW, uh, but I just want to show you, if we go to the show block diagram option here, I just want to show you that uh, someone who wanted to do this implementation in the future, hopefully this video is gonna help them to kind of like grab this uh, code and then just use it, right? So um, you can see here that what he's doing with this um, uh, interface here or this HMI, he has um, different states here. So a timeout, initialization, configuration, or config he calls it, close and exit. And if you go one step um, uh, further into the program, I'm gonna double click on this. This is what uh, I think in LabVIEW they call this a sub BI. So it's kind of like a program within a program. That's what I understand. Um, this is the sub BI. And then if you open this block diagram from that sub BI, you'll see the, um, the actual, um, the basic structure of this program, right? So let me go back to init. So for example, here he is creating, whoever wrote, wrote this program, he is creating a, a, a TCP master instance, and then he's specifying an IP address, he's specifying the port. Um, and then under here, he now, uh, actually if we open this up, we open another sub BI, I believe, and then we open the block diagram. Now here you can see the CCON, the CPOS. Uh, I get, I'm guessing that he's doing a rearrangement of the bytes uh, coming through the coming through the words on Modbus and then sending them to specific uh, bits or bytes depending on the CCON and, 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 and CPOS uh, arrays. But anyways, again, I'm not gonna go in depth into, into this functionality, but is if someone wanted to uh, repurpose this code, everything is in here. All right, so what else? I'm just gonna close this because the main purpose of this video is to show you the functionality. Um, so close this, close this. All right, so now we're back to the main um, page here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this, so run. And uh, I'm going to specify the IP address of my CMMO. In my case, this is 192.168.110. So I put that in here, 192.168.1.10. And then I click on, or I hit enter. Oh no, I just leave that there. I guess it's a string but, uh, field there. Uh, I just hit enter here on this button and now I have communication or at least it says okay, whatever that means. Um, now, I don't, I'm not getting anything here, right? Because I need to activate this button to start getting some feedback. Now I'm going to put this side by side so we can see what's going on here in FCT as well. Um, answer to PLC. So here, uh, FCT say, saying that the CMMO is sending a motion complete, uh, a reference bit, uh, voltage load, and OPM1, right? And it's exactly what we have here, right? Um, okay, so now what else can we do? Let's say that I wanted to home my axis, or actually enable first, right? So I want to enable my axis. What do I do? I click enable, halt, and stop, right? But as you can see, I'm still not getting this, um, these messages from LabVIEW yet, because remember that I told you that we have this button here, this config button. So as soon as I click here, um, I guess whoever wrote this program is when they are executing the write or the send information through Modbus. So I click on that and then the information goes through and I get this enable, stop, and halt bits coming from LabVIEW. All right, and, uh, and uh, at the same time, cyclically, I get the information back from the CMMO. Enable, operation enabled, and halt, okay? So what else? What else can we do here? Uh, let's say I wanted to home this axis. Let's see what's the current position. Let me disable it here. So I'm going to, yeah, just disable it. 
Okay, so it's disabled and I'm going to manually move the axis that I have in front of me. So I'm gonna move that to a certain position. Let's say right there. Um, and I'm going to enable it again. Remember I enabled, but then I have to click here and config, right? So config, it's enabled. Now let's send it to home. So I'm going to toggle this and then home. And now you can see here the operation mode is homing mode and it is going to zero point, all right? So with home, I'm going to deselect this button, right? This one right here, home, and then write that. So that value goes away. Now, if you wanted to, I guess most instances, you were going to control this axis via direct mode. This uh, uh, person who wrote this program also has this uh, record selection. Uh, I guess, I don't know what's the translation for this, but record selection and direct mode as well. So in this case, I'm going to select direct mode. And um, I'm going to, I don't really know if I have to write that yeah I do because you see that that change here actually if I select that doesn't got doesn't get applied until I hit config so let me go back to direct mode config and there it is all right so what next let's do uh let's execute a move right so here this is going to be the position and in this case since I'm using a factor group of uh what minus six I believe let's see uh, field bus factor group minus six, right? So I'm using a factor group of minus six. Um, let's write, uh, I'm using a, an actuator of 100 millimeter stroke. So let's write 95,000, which is gonna be 95 millimeters, right? And I'm going to write a speed here. Remember that in direct mode, the speed is specified in percentage, right? So I'm going to specify a 5% in the speed. So I'm going to write this, right? So that is written. And now I'm going to toggle this bit start and then execute a write, I guess, or config. So now you can see the target position is 95, the actual position, I see the axis moving right now. And it reached the end of travel. I get this motion complete. And um, yeah, that's about it. I also did get the acknowledge, but since I'm not doing this on a cyclic program, I, I'm not uh, seeing the transitions there. So anyways, this acknowledge should go away now that I deactivated this start, right? Uh, let's send it back to, uh, I don't know, 10,000, for example, which is 10 millimeters, right? Uh, at a different speed, let's say 15. So start, and we should see the acknowledge, and the motion complete should go away, I believe. So motion complete goes away. When we reach 10, we get the motion complete. All right, so as you can see, pretty pretty straightforward. Oh, by the way, you also do get the uh, the feedback here. So this is the actual position. Um, let's see if you also get the the actual velocity. So let's do that move again. Ninety five thousand. Uh, make this false and then start it. So yes, you do get the actual velocity here. Looks like, and then you also get the um, the actual position down here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there's more to it. You could do more more functions here. You could also try the record selection. For now, I just wanted to use the direct mode. That's the one that I use more often. Um, the I guess the appropriate way of uh, finishing this would be to just get rid of this enables. So disable the drive. And then you can close the communication here. Close. So now you see that this automatically uh, was switched off. And that's it. I can just close or exit the application by clicking here. Uh, so remember, it's important that for you to get this program working, you have to have, let me make, maximize this. You have to have this library installed, right? NI Modbus library. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope that it's gonna be useful for you sometime in the future.